Hey guys, what's going on? This is going to be a Visser Reels maintenance video. It's time to do the maintenance because it's about to be fall. I want to make sure my stuff is going to be in tip top shape for this fall run. I haven't really done anything to this reel except for just rinse it um, when I was done using it. It's been in use for about two seasons, three seasons now. And um, I noticed it was a little slightly tough to crank initially when it sat. So I think it needs to be um, greased up. I got to check the seals on it. I'll just do everything that needs to be done. We'll start with taking off the spool and stuff like that. And drag system looks fine. Everything looks pretty clean under there. I'm a little worried about some of this corrosion on the brass, but we know. I probably should have been oiling this shaft right here. I wonder what that little tiny o-ring is right there. Oh man. Alright, so you see there's this little pinion that slid over that. Man, you don't want to lose this thing. This thing is tiny. Holy cow. And once you get that off, you can take this little piece off, as you can see. So it requires that microscopic piece to go on there to hold that on. And I'll show you a little thing with this tool, which is pretty cool. Visser provides this little tool here. i give you a bunch of parts here. So we'll be using those. So let's see if I can get this piece off. So this one's going to be righty to get off, just like most reels, because it's opposite as... Alright, there's one seal right here. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Looks pretty clean there. So this is some kind of seal here. Let's continue breaking down the reel. I did loosen up this oil port before. Let's tighten that back up a little. So I'm just going to take that side plate off. So let's switch this tool to this. I think it's this one. Yep. So it's great that they provide you everything you need. So you can break the reel down and maintain it. So this is my first time taking apart this reel. I've never done any of this. So we're just going to kind of do a little. I'm not going to do anything with the bail, bail unit. So I'll show you a little trick with this. Um, what you want to do is you want to take the the handle cover off for the right hand retrieve cover and that looks like it's fine there's no sand in there some grease so we'll take these two side plate covers off I mean side plate screws off so I'm just gonna I'm just winging this because I've never took taken this reel apart ever it's gonna be first time I really should have done it earlier. Both my reels need maintenance. I mean, even though you buy these reels and they say they're sealed, I mean, you really do have to maintain them. I mean, they're 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 sealed, but everything needs maintenance. But they've lasted a lot longer than I expected. All right, so this one has like a little washer unit on here, so I gotta be careful. They look like they're the same size. I don't know if there was a... Yeah, there's another washer on in the bottom of this one. A little O-ring or something weird. I guess that's like extra sealing. All right, so what's cool... Anyway, so if you want to see, there's like a little... O-ring on the bottom here or something. So what's cool about this reel 
is to get this side plate off. For the larger ones, I think you can use this, but this is too large. But what you do is you take this piece, and if you notice, it's got an inside thread here also. So you twist this on, and it goes onto the side plate. See, once you have it on the side plate, you can pull the side plate off. All right, here we go. Did it evenly shake it out? Ooh. I mean, it's not rusty, it's greasy in there, which is good. Well, it's all good in there, but it's gross. So you can see this little bearing fits in the traverse guide right there. So when you put it back together, you want to make sure, I guess, you get it in there. Alright, so you guys just want to go this way. It's not... Just make sure you get your wrench tight and you won't mar this up. So, I'll do the rest by hand. Feel a nice tight seal here. And let's check this out. This is off. I think this should just pop off. There we go. I got like this piece off. All right, took a little break there for a second. So um, I took everything apart off of the shaft. Some of the stuff was pretty hard to take off. I popped it off with a pair of um, needle nose pliers. For example, this last bearing on this uh, main brass gear here. Um, there's nothing wrong with this bearing, but it was pretty tight on here because of, I guess, corrosion. <clears throat> I guess salt water gets, it, it's pretty tight on this bottom area right here where it goes in. So I had to pop this off. There's a little, um, I didn't take off any of these bottom screws because I didn't need to access any of those bearings, but, um, I pulled this one off. I listened to it. I spun it up. It seems fine, so I'm not going to replace this one, but um, there is one bearing that is majorly shot. So I'm going to go and show you guys that one. Um, and that's the one that's right under, above the anti-reverse and this whole pop piece. So um, it's the first large bearing, and uh, I think a lot of reels are going to have this type of issue, but yeah, this thing is pretty, pretty shot. I don't even know if it wants to spin up. So, um, this bearing's pretty much seized up. Um, so I will be replacing that. So I'll measure this out with my um, calipers and I'll replace this bearing and I'll clean out the reel for now and, and then come back to this project another uh, day. All right, guys, we're back. I had to order a bearing. I ran into some issues with this reel. The three screws, part of the traverse system, I was trying to take those out just to check these bearings and got one out, but I kind of stripped the top of these other ones and I contacted Visser. Hopefully I'll get some replacements soon and I could get those out and replace them, but they're, I didn't loosen anything, so they're still fine. So I'm just gonna use the reel with these currently. It's just I can't take the screws out. I also, didn't want to wait um, to get a bearing from this or so I measured that one if anyone's curious I think it's 10 16 by 4 so I ordered the bearing from fast eddy bearings and I decided to go with a ceramic bearing so it doesn't rust as easily and with a rubber seal so we'll see how that lasts the bearing was only six dollars shipping was about eight it came out to 14 bucks uh, the shipping was more expensive than the bearing itself, but hey, I really wanted to get it here. So you can see um, it's the exact same size. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put this in. My plan is to put oil on this reel instead of grease. I'm going to get some thick oil and put that in here. 
So right now what I'll do is I'll reassemble the reel and um, I cleaned all the grease out of it. I used a electronics cleaner and now I will reassemble the reel. Oh, by the way, I apologize for the noise in the background. That's my 3D printer. I'm printing a transducer mount um, for kayak and the prototype broke and I realized I had to reinforce it a little. But I need, I got a new fish finder for the kayak and I need that to fit on. I'm going to oil this up right here while it's out. I'm using Corrosion X here. It's, a, it's good oil. It's a little thin for, in my opinion because so if you're going to put an oil inside a reel I would go with the thicker oil probably. Um, so I'm planning on getting some thicker oil to put in this reel. So I put some oil on the top there and now uh, we got to put this top piece on. So this is how this reel stays waterproof if you guys are curious is there is a o-ring here and there's also a seal up here that's right here and when we put this down here that will prevent the water from going around that edge so it's the o-ring right there that's creating a seal right now actually I'll put a dab of oil on the o-ring too I do have o-ring oil but we'll just use this for now I don't really think that's a big deal so that will help it spin and not tear it up as quickly so now that this is on um, I'm gently gonna give it a nice little turn here not too tight though snug it a little and then next comes this piece and this piece just kind of caps on pushes on top and I'm just pushing this on and now that I got that on this is part of a spinning system and then this last piece will prevent oil I mean water from going down the shaft so I guess this is the part that you want to lube up a lot if you're fishing so I mean to start with I'm just gonna put a little oil on here right now on the seal here this green part that's rubber and uh, put a little oil on the shaft here we'll slide this down and I'm gonna hold this traverse guide up here down here on the bottom of my thumb and this piece goes in and if you see there's another um, o-ring there I'll put a little oil here it's threaded so I'm pushing up on this traverse guide up here and it's got it's gonna allow you to thread it on and I'm gonna use this and again I'm not gonna go too tight All right, there, you'll feel it just stop. It's actually pretty easy, you'll feel it stop and I'll just stop there. So you can see it spins freely, nice here. We'll put oil on this bearing area. There's pinion gear, some on the gear. Again, I'm gonna open it up with this access hole and squirt a whole bunch of thicker oil on there when I'm done um, I'll order that oil but for now I'm just gonna put some lubricant on all the bearings and on this traverse guide piece the piece that goes in the traverse guide so really I could put the reel together now since most of it's assembled now uh, I think uh, just like a van stall, it's, but it's not as dangerous. You don't want to, you want to make sure you line up this traverse guide um, bearing into the traverse guide. You, it won't lock it up like a van stall, but because you could just unscrew this one. But um, with the van stall, they have a one way bearing inside this. That's where the one way bearing is inside that handle, so you don't want to do that. But with this one, 
Uh, I guess I would push it all the way to the back for this back position. Put it in the top. I'm gonna make sure it's pushed back there. And you'll see it line up. It should snap together. I guess it helps to, I just shook this shaft up and down a little and everything looks like it snapped together nice and tight. I can feel it. So before I reassemble it, let's uh, spin this really quick. I can see this handle shaft spinning. So it's good. Everything looks nice. I can actually put these two side plate screws back on. Again, I'm not going to put these on. I'm not tightening these like crazy because if they ever do back out, you'll notice it. I mean, if you're fishing, and you'll see it. So I'm not going to go crazy and tighten these too crazy, but I'll make them nice and snug. I'm going to take this tool piece on the back. That's part of that off. Put the cover back on because I'm in not a righty cranker. Torx set right here. And I could put this little pin back through, which was the smallest part on the whole setup. And we're going to put this little pin back through here and put this microscopic piece on. I don't even know what it is. I think somehow it just goes over it. Is it, it might be a tiny o-ring. I don't even know what it's made of. But we're just gonna place it back over where it went like that. There's a little groove in the metal there. That holds on this top spool shaft. I didn't service the drag, I didn't think that was necessary. I really just wanted my reel to spin freely. Put some oil in here around this outer seal. So hopefully I assembled everything correctly. And it spins, all right. Probably needs to break in a little, the bearing, but it feels great so far. Nice and smooth again. And now, hopefully, we won't get any issues because I changed it to ceramic bearings, and ceramic bearings have a lighter spin up, and they can't rust, so the only thing I have to worry about is the outer, the outer uh, casing. So, Hopefully you guys found this Visser replacing a bearing video and like kind of like a two-year um, Update review on the reel. I still love it the reel. It's awesome. Um, I think any reel really um, The weak point is where the shaft is water is always going to kind of enter there. So if you let that area dry up, it's going to be uh, Non-hydrophobic and water is going to get there easier. So I suggest always lubing up if you have a bearing inside your roller area, I would suggest always placing oil inside your roller bearing area here on both sides. Some Shimano reels have a hole that you place it in. Another thing is I would suggest always applying oil to the shaft and that would really reduce times you're going to have to take apart and service the reel and replace the bearing like I did. Now, again, if you want to see what happened to the bearing. This was no lubrication and no maintenance after two years. I mean, the reel was still fine, but eventually this top bearing just couldn't take it, I guess. So overall, this reel has been pretty good. I've still caught plenty of fish. It's ready to go again. There we go. My, my Visser number four is back in action. Hopefully I'm ready to slay some big fish. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, if you've watched this video all the way to this part and you aren't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. It really helps out my channel. It really goes a long way. And as always, 
Thank you for watching.